hair looks cute until you look at it in the camera. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophie and welcome back to Music of Bookmans. Today I am doing my January wrap up, which is a little late, but I've been super busy. My work has been crazy. We're currently setting up a new bookstore, so I'm basically grabbing onto every piece of time that I can get. So the first thing I read in January was the second Throne of Glass book, Crown of Midnight. Oh, I'm sorry, do you not have to refilm portions of your videos because you were holding the book upside down the whole time? I am sure that no one is finding out what this series is about from me, but the first book follows Selena Sardothian, who was a former assassin who has to fight in a competition to become the king's champion. This second book I am listening to on audiobook with my lovely partner, and we are experiencing this series together. I'd read the first one before, but I'd never read further. I gave this probably like a three, maybe a three and a half out of five. I think the magic is cool. I really like the word mark things and the demons and the portals and the reveal at the end of this book is really cool. I'm a little frustrated with Selena. I find it a little bit hard to believe that she's like this crazy badass former assassin. I there, were, there was one part of this book where that finally started to make sense but I just didn't understand how a character from that background could be the character in the first book and then in this one I just found her to be a bit tenuous. I have heard the series picks up from the third book and that she becomes much more her own once she meets like the main sort of group and the fan favorite characters in the series. So I'm hoping that's true. We'll definitely be listening to the next one, though I think we're listening to another series first. So we'll probably pick this up sort of late February, maybe early March. The next book that I picked up was entirely a cover by. Also, I love horror and ghosts and creepy things. Uh, and that was A House of Ghosts by W.C. Ryan. This one is about a bunch of people who go to a haunted house to run a seance because of some people who may have died in the war. But meanwhile, there are people who've been sent there on an intelligence mission to try to figure out if anyone is doing anything strange or illicit. It's a closed set, There's, they can't leave the house, so it's kind of got that like Agatha Christie style like mansion feel to it. I liked this, but it was not what it said on the tin. So I thought this would be like a First World War period time ghost story in this cool creepy like haunted house, but it ended up being more like historical fiction. This was supposed to read to someone like Melmoth, by Sarah Perry than it would be to something like We've Always Lived in the Castle or The Haunting of Hill House. I enjoyed it. I really liked the characters. I thought the world was drawn in a really interesting way and the story was unfolded in a really cool way. Uh, the sort of at the atmosphere wasn't as creepy as I wanted it to be. In parts of it, it was quite chilling and that was really cool, but it just didn't have that like horror element that I wanted from this cover and this title. And it is stunning. Look at that. I just, oh. Um, so this one also probably got a three and a half stars, though I think that a lot of it had to do with my expectations going in and not necessarily the book itself. The writing was really good and clean. It was definitely very page turning. Uh, the author knew how to end each chapter on a bit that made you want to keep reading. It was just not a book that filled my need for like creepy horror at the time that I picked it up. If you like light horror elements but don't like being scared, I think this is a good one. Next book was Greenlight by Benjamin Stevenson. Um, I've met Benjamin, he's lovely, and this was great. So this is about um, a guy named Jack who runs, who writes a podcast and a documentary about this true crime story, kind of like a serial or something like that. And in it, he argues that the person convicted for the murder did not get a fair trial. And then because of that, the killer gets, ends up being set free. And then things start to happen and Jack does some shifty things and then realizes that he might actually have gotten a murderer to be able to walk free. And he then goes back to the town to try and solve the original murder case in the hopes that it is not the man that he let out of prison. I don't think that like Australiana thrillers are really my thing. The book that I'm reading at the moment is also sort of in this vein. And I don't think that they're just, it's just not my setting. But in terms of the actual story, the twists in this were great. The way that it was written was really creepy. There were surprising elements. The antagonist was drawn in a really cool and chilling way. It was definitely very page turning. So if you like backpacker stories and thrillers set in small towns, maybe a little bit of fraud, uh, that are fairly page turning, 
in like sort of idyllic Australian country this I definitely recommend I think this is definitely worth picking up I enjoyed it I listened to this one on audio and the audiobook was great this basically just disappeared on a train ride and it was really good I really liked it again probably like a three and a half to a four but that was my problem not the book's problem <laughs> then I picked up Once Upon a River and this book and I had a journey together. <laughs> Once Upon a River is about a, a bunch of people in a small town on the Thames and one day this very tall, very ill man comes in with a child who is dead and drops them on the floor and then faints and then they call the healer to help the man awaken and then discover the child coming back to life. It then follows several people who claim that this child is their child for various reasons and the mysteries surrounding that. <laughs> it took me forever to read this. This was my works book club book. Um, I work at a bookstore, context. <laughs> I didn't actually get to go to the book club because my lovely partner ended up making me a surprise meal for my birthday and that was really sweet. But I still read it. I liked it. The writing is beautiful on a sentence by sentence level, but she set up all of these storylines so that I wanted to go in a specific direction and then she sort of changed it so I was quite disappointed by the ending or sort of like the middle third but the writing was beautiful and the story was told in a really cool way this is another one that's kind of a reader like for Melmoth I would recommend this one but I just don't think it was for me I'm interested to pick up her other book because I think her writing was beautiful and I think she knows how to tell a story in a really lovely way and I've heard that the 13th tale is fantastic I've only heard good things about it so I will definitely be picking up that one in the future but unfortunately this one just didn't hit the mark for me and so we go through all of those books and nothing had gotten more than like a three and a half four stars for me and i was like feeling like i was having a bit of a middling month and then i picked up the ark for hunter by jack heath if you saw my last video you would know that hangman by jack heath was my top in my top 10 favorite books of last year it was a really great thriller and the sequel was certainly no exception so the first book follows uh sort of criminal anti-hero who works as a consultant for the FBI solving cases in Texas. I don't want to say more than that, there's like a big plot thing but in the first 50 pages of the first book but I discovered it without reading about it and it was great and so I don't want other people to find out about it without reading it if they can. So I would suggest not reading too much about this book. Do be one though it is quite gory so if you don't like your thrillers gory this is probably one to give a miss. I thought it was great. It was really blood pumping and thrilling and my definitely my first five star read of the year. It made my blood run cold in certain parts. The way that he like gave you information about the characters was really cool. I just, I really liked this one. I thought it was really well put together. I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait if, I think someone picked up the TV rights for it, the for Hangman when that one came out and I can't wait because it's going to be amazing. I hope it follows through because it's perfect for TV, like the way that these stories are built. Then I picked up If We Were Villains by Emil Rio and I loved this as well. This was my streak of really wonderful books that I picked up in the sort of the second half of the month. If We Were Villains by Emil Rio is like a dark academia story about a, a bunch of students at a college in America who all study Shakespeare and they all sort of fit into one of the different archetypes and their own personalities and the personalities of their characters sort of meld together and then you the story the way the story is framed is that you are following one of the characters many years later who has been in prison for the murder or death of one of the seven but you don't know which one yet unlike the secret history and you get to see the events unfold as he tells his story for the first time. Um, this I picked up on Books and Lala's recommendation because I love her and our reading tastes tend to be quite similar and also I love the secret history. It's had a lot of elements that the secret history has. It's got that campus vibe, it's got the sort of pretentious academia dark feeling to it, it's got the we it's it's got the same sense that the characters are both themselves and either the characters that they're playing or the f figures that they're studying and they're losing where they stop and those things begin really well written 
it differed in terms of the pacing. This was much faster paced and this felt much more like a thriller. The writing on a sentence by sentence level in this was very clean and bits of it were beautiful, but they were not the same as a Donna Tartt book. So depending on why you liked The Secret History, if you found The Secret History to be really long and slow and boring, I think you should pick this up if you liked the other elements of it. If you loved Donna Tartt's writing because of the philosophy of it and the, the beautiful long winding sentences and the way she just does things with words that no one else can, this would probably feel like a disappointing reader like. So I think look at why you like The Secret History before picking this up on that recommendation. All that being said, I loved this. As the theatre nerd and the English lit nerd in me, I just devoured it. It felt like I could just spot all of the things and it just it just felt like coming home to like my high school English class. Um, I really loved this. I would recommend being familiar with the Shakespeare plays beforehand, especially like Julius Caesar, Macbeth, and Romeo and Juliet. I think those are the main ones. Uh, so that way you know who the characters are because they there's a lot of talk about them fading into the characters. I was googling bits of it that I didn't remember because, well, I remember the stories of Macbeth. I couldn't remember the characters' names, so I was double checking to make sure I knew who was who. But knowing that added a lot of depth to this book. This is certainly a love letter to theatre and it's also a pretty decent thriller with a really great mystery. I really loved this and I would definitely recommend picking this up. This also got five stars from me. Then my partner and I finished our audio listen of the first Daughter of Smoke and Bone book which I adore. I read the whole trilogy years ago when they sort of first came out and it was my favourite sort of YA fantasy and I, as I got older, I started to worry that maybe it wasn't as good as I remembered and I just had this like love for it because I read it when I was like 16 but they're way better than I remember. They're so fun and funny. Daughter of Smoke and Bone follows a really spunky blue haired art student in Prague who has been raised by monsters and lives between two different worlds. This is also a story of angels and war and love and sadness and brokenness and it is stunning and please pick it up because it's also one of the funniest series I've ever read and I just need Susanna to come be my best friend please. The last book I read was Rule by Ellen Goodlett. This follows three different girls who have all been summoned by the king they arrive expecting their execution because they've all done things that could result in execution and then to find that they are actually the king's illegitimate daughters and as the king is now sick they have to fight each other for the throne. Uh, it doesn't have an actual kind of dueling thing, there isn't really a competition, it's not like some like fantasy books where you actually have to fight for the throne or like a throne glass situation where you're all in like a competition. Uh, it's more like they have to go through training and see which one of them excels the most and it's got some sort of political tones as they navigate the court system. I thought this was really fun. I really liked the characters and the relationships that they had. The one issue I had with this was it had three different characters all going through exactly the same storyline and so it would be like you would read chapters where the same thing would happen three times but with three different people and I just kind of wish the author differentiated the sisters a bit more so that way it felt like every storyline was different and dynamic and different things were happening because you so it starts out where you're introduced to each of the three characters being summoned to the king and that it's it's sort of the same scene and you find out different information but it's essentially the same thing and then you find out each of the three characters has a secret and it's done in the same way and then you find out someone knows about each of the three characters secrets and it's just done this weird kind of formulaic way and I feel like if she changed the pacing it would have worked a bit better but that being said this was really fun especially the second half I think this is a really promising start to a series this also got three and a half stars from me that's it that's all the books i read in january it was kind of a middling mediocre sort of month a lot of sort of three three and a half four star books um which isn't bad by any means i'd like three and a half stars it's a good rating for me it's a pretty average rating but it just took a while for me to find something that i really loved but if we were villains and hunter by jack Heath were fantastic i highly recommend them both as well as picking up anything else you think sounds interesting I certainly don't think any of these books are bad books, they're just books that maybe didn't work for me for some reason. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you want to talk about them because I'm always up for nerdy book discussions <laughs> and have a nice day.